Right now I'm going to introduce, uh, I'm going to hand it over to our Dr. Rob Shea. I'll also introduce Jamie Moran, who is our uh, student award winner here for the self-directed student award winner. And I think you're going to get a lot out of this session. Uh, and I'm sure Rob will indicate that to you when I pass it over to him. And I'll also welcome Do Dr. Donna Hardy Cox, uh, who's our associate vice president academic for students. So welcome uh, you folks. And uh, we're so delighted to be here with you this afternoon. So I'll hand it off to you, Dr. Shea. Thank you, Dr. Myrick. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is probably not the place I'm the most comfortable. I'd much rather be there in a, in a lecture hall, moving back and forth and up and down the stairs and everywhere else. Uh, but I'm so, so happy that this year we could embrace the virtual format uh, to present the award. And I think it's just going to be extremely exciting as you as the uh, event unfolds. Um, I'm very pleased to be here and, and very pleased to, to talk a little bit about the award and talk a little bit about the committee and, and all of the things that brought us to this point. We're joined today by many supporters of this award. Uh, it, it certainly takes a community to bring us to this point. Uh, faculty, staff and students, uh, I'm delighted that you all could be here and be a part of the, the teaching and learning conference, I think is the apt place for this award to be presented. The creation of this student award is itself an example of self-directed learning. And when we look back on the history of this, and it was created actually by a Memorial University undergraduate student. And in 2014, Cassie Humber, who was a linguistic student at the time, uh, set out to create a student award to recognize the tremendous effort involved in designing and implementing a self-directed learning project. And what a fitting tribute to do this during a teaching and learning conference. Cassie was a student in a course taught by Sebastian Dupre. Uh, some of you around the Memorial University community will remember Sebastian, um, who was at the time a lecturer in the Department of Anthropology and Geography. And when the idea of a self-directed learning award came to mind, uh, the, the conversations evolved and it was like those aha moments that normally happen. Recognizing her instructor's keen interest in teaching and learning, uh, Cassie approached uh, Mr. Dupre to share her idea for a learning award and the two saw the potential in the idea. And from that point forward, it brings us to this point, actually, uh, because they'd worked to develop a proposal uh, that went to the, uh, I think it was the Teaching and Learning Framework Committee at the time, and through administrators and provosts and presidents and stakeholders across the university, which was uh, received to wide acclaim. In 2016, their proposal became a reality when the Teaching and Learning Framework Advisory Committee and Working Group unanimously supported its creation as the Memorial University Award for Outstanding Self-Directed Learning. The selection committee was once again this year very pleased with the number and quality of applications. And if anybody thinks about that, this is just a, a couple of hours getting together as a committee and picking an award winner. I have to tell you, having been a part of this since, since its inception, uh, it is absolutely incredible. Weekends are given up, nights are given up in adjudicating the amazing applications from all of the, uh, the people who put in their applications for this award. Applications this year were received from undergraduate students across disciplines and across campuses of Memorial. The applications for this award are future leaders, creators, and explorers. Ex among the most list of impressive applicants this year, there was lots of impressive applicants, so uh, we're just going to cheery pick a few, was a chemistry student who, when pandemic measures were implemented, lost access to lab facilities to complete their summer undergraduate research award project, and instead, set up a home lab and used readily available materials such as felt tip pens, nail polish, and ethanol. A student of visual arts program whose final year independent project focused on racial diversity and representation in art and who developed their artistic skill and expression by creating portraits of the diverse athletes who completed in the 2016 Olympics. 306 portraits, one for each Olympic event. An earth sciences student used to hands-on experimental learning, experiential learning, who, when we transitioned to remote teaching and learning, researched, practiced, and shared with peers the most effective approaches for learning in an online environment. A science student who founded a youth organization in Dhaka, Bangladesh, dedicated to social justice activities related to the recognition, equity, and safety of women and people of diverse gender identities. An education student with ADHD, whose knowledge and understanding of their condition has contributed to their academic success 
and their desire to make a positive change in learning and education for children with learning disabilities. All applicants, as per previous years and no difference this year, demonstrate extremely hard work, creativity, commitment, and perseverance. And I would suggest the word resilience, that is, we can attach to all of the activities over the past year of our students, uh, being resilient through this absolutely incredible time in our lives. The incredible committee was incredibly inspired by each and every applicant. But unfortunately, each year we do have to pick one winner. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the contributions of the award selection committee members. And I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite committees at the university that I've been a part of. It's exciting, it's engaging, and it renews your faith in, in student learning and the passion that we're all a part of. Committee members this year were Jennifer Brown, Associate Director of Student Life, Dr. Ailsa Craig, Associate Dean Curriculum and Programs, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. Dr. Jenna Rosales, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science. Sarah Shepard, a student rep, and Ella Stevenson, a student rep. So without further ado, I now invite my colleague and really good friend, Dr. Donna Hardy Cox, Associate VP Students, to present the Memorial University Award for Outstanding Self-Directed Learning to this year's recipient. Welcome, Donna. Thank you very much, Rob, and uh, I really uh, good afternoon to everybody as Rob was just uh, sharing with us those examples because I haven't heard of them. It really just um, as it, it really gives me such a warm and a proud feeling to belong to a university where students are supported by their campus community, by their faculty members, by the teaching staff and other staff around the university to to help them realize these levels of uh, leadership and engagement. I'm truly touched and thank you for sharing those, uh, Dr. Shea. Uh, absolutely delighted to be here, part of this wonderful conference. I'm really enjoying my day and congratulations to you, Kim, and to your committee for, I know a tremendous amount of work that must have gone into this. But my task this afternoon is really not a task at all. It's a pleasure to present the Memorial University Award for Self-Directed Learning to Jamie Moran, a student of the Memorial University School of Music. And I see there's several uh, people here from that school this afternoon. Uh, I've had the opportunity yesterday to meet Jamie and to discover how his passion for music, history, and his province have led him to this award that we're about to offer him today. His story of achievement starts with the third edition of the Gerald S. Doyle Old Time Songs of Newfoundland. And I remember seeing this on the old organ in my grandmother's home. So it, was, it brought back some very fond memories to me. This publication uh, emerged in January of 1955 and contained the music and lyrics of 47 songs. Now, while the songs like The Squid Jig and Ground and Let Me Fish Off uh, Cape St. Mary's are well known and loved songs of this province, this valuable collection also includes many lesser, nor lesser known and performed pieces. It is Jamie Moran's goal to revive all of the songs in this songbook. He's giving overlooked songs a chance to shine and staying true to the melody and lyrics of each song as it is written in the songbook. In this process, Jamie has learned uh, and written about the history of music in Newfoundland and Labrador, has expanded his repertoire, developed his music musicianship and become technically fluent in audio and video recording techniques. Jamie proposed this project for credit to a School of Music course called Music in the Community. But this project also had its roots in a summer job he held as a cultural ambassador for the Sound Bone Traditional Arts Foundation and a collaboration with the Pooch Cove Heritage Society. Given the pandemic restrictions, Jamie was unable to travel and perform live as a cultural ambassador. So using basic computer equipment to record video and sound together in one take, 
Jamie recorded and uploaded performances of several well-known songs from that good old Ger Gerald S. Doyle songbook. And these were recorded to the Pooch Cove Heritage Society's website. What a delight it must have been for that Heritage Society to have that tremendous resource. To complete this course project, Jamie needed to set up and learn how to operate and professionalize his home recording studio. I was very impressed to learn that he had earning, it took earnings from three, not one, not two, but three jobs during the summer of 2020. And we all know what student employment looked like in the summer of 2020, which enabled him to purchase the recording equipment that facilitated along with his intranet to create these audio and video recordings. Each week, Jamie learned one song from the Gerald S. Doyle songbook. Jamie produced a video performing the song and posted it on Facebook, along with the history of the song, the people, the places, and the events it referenced. Through trial and error, Jamie used, learned to use a variety of instrumentation and audio and video recording techniques. Bill Brennan, Jamie's course supervisor in music, reported that with each recording, Jamie's musicianship developed and Jamie developed, demonstrated progressively more complex technical recording skills. Jamie said, the recordings became more interesting, engaging and professional. But Jamie never lost sight of the importance and the message of his music. While working through the Doyle songbook during the fall and winter, Jamie also produced and hosted and performed a virtual music program on Friday evenings. Ken Pittman, the chair of the Pooch Cove Heritage Society, wrote that these Friday night offerings garnered a loyal following throughout the province and belong. And how I wished when I read that, that I had known that, because I'm sure I would have enjoyed it as well. Jamie is now learning from these experiences to record two original songs for release to radio and digital streaming platforms. Well done, and I'll certainly watch out for these. Jamie's profound love of music of his province and a desire to keep that music alive for future generations has driven this project. It is Jamie's dedication, investment of personal time and resources, and the realization of a collection of recordings of songs from the classic Gerald S. Doyle songbook that we recognize and celebrate today. Jamie Moran is a deserving recipient of the Memorial University Award for Outstanding Self-Directed Learning. Using virtual magic, I'm truly honored to present this award to Jamie. Jamie, without further ado, I'm going to pass it to you for a presentation. Thank you very, very much, folks. Uh, thank you all for uh, coming this uh, afternoon. And uh, thank you very much to uh, Dr. Shea and Dr. Uh, Hardy Cox for their very, very kind words. I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> but uh, I have a short uh, presentation here. Uh, what I decided to do for my presentation was to uh, kind of summarize my um, apl uh, my application essay because I think that that hit most of the uh, main points of the uh, project, and uh, Dr. Shea and Dr. Hardy Cox also touched on uh, some of those points as 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 well. So um, uh, in my presentation, it's mainly just uh, uh, bullet points just to keep me on track because if I don't have something there, I'm likely to go off on some kind of tangent that doesn't make sense. So. Uh, I'm mainly just going to uh, summarize my uh, essay, and uh, I'll show uh, one of the uh, videos I did for the project at the end, and if we have time after that, uh, we might do a live performance uh, as well. So I'll jump right into it with uh, how the project came about. So uh, when the COVID-19 pandemic began in March of 2020, uh, all, of my upcoming, uh, all of my upcoming performances uh, both as a uh, local Irish Newfoundland musician and as well as a member of the School of Music, uh, all, all, upcoming, all upcoming performances were cancelled. Uh, as a local Irish Newfoundland musician, uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend is definitely the busiest time of the year for me. Uh, of the five gigs 
that were booked for that week and actually only two of them went ahead and the actual St. Patrick's Day, which is the, the 17th of March, uh, happened to be the last day of uh, in-person classes on campus as well. And uh, during the first lockdown, I noticed that there were a lot of musicians, both uh, local and uh, globally known, that were that started to do these uh, live these live stream performances mainly over uh, Facebook to serve as a kind of alternative to uh, uh, in person performances being uh, cancelled. And when I when I saw the high volume of these live streams and how many artists were doing these live streams i i started to realize that this would probably be the new norm for performing artists for the foreseeable future uh so i i got to thinking and i said well you know i should probably try to learn how to do it as well how to do these uh uh live stream concerts which was a completely foreign concept to me uh when the pandemic started so for the first couple of live streams I did, it was mainly just for family and friends. If they wanted to hear a certain song, you know, I would I I I would play it, and uh, that was back during a time when I didn't have any microphones or fancy headphones or anything like I have here uh, now. Uh, all I had back then was my uh, cell phone. So I would open up Facebook on my on, on my phone. I'd use the built-in camera and the microphone, and I'd sit down and I'd just sing and I would play a uh, guitar. And I do that for like two hours once or twice a week. And that was how it all uh, started, really. And then uh, I think it was around the beginning of May, uh, there was an email that was sent out to all of the uh, School of Music students, uh, basically saying that uh, there were preparations underway now for the fall semester to be uh, com completely uh, virtual with lessons and ensembles, and that we would need to purchase uh some e equipment so we could get a good sound and things over uh zoom and uh, webex and uh, such so um when i saw that we needed to buy e equipment um the email that the school of music sent out uh gave kind of recommendations that were very kind of cost e cost efficient for uh students but um, I got to thinking about how I had always wanted to kind of have a small uh, uh, studio just to do some basic uh, re re recording stuff, and um, I was thinking that if I was if if I had to invest in some gear now, it was better for me to in uh, it was better for me to save up some money and get some e equipment that I would be able to keep using after I graduated because I knew that this wasn't just something I was going to want to do while classes were online. It was only something that I would want to continue to do uh, after I graduated. And um, of course, uh, these kinds of these pieces of tech, 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 technology and such, they aren't very, very cheap. Uh, but uh, I was fortunate enough during during the first lockdown to keep my job as an essential worker at a uh, fast food restaurant. But if I had just kept that one job after I bought all of the gear, I probably wouldn't have much money left over. And of course, I was thinking about, you know, saving for the future and everything as well, because I was going to be graduating soon. And I figured I probably had to generate some more income somehow. So uh, to make a long story short, I ended up working three jobs over the summer, which I think Dr. Hardy uh, Cox mentioned. So I I kept my job in the uh, fast food restaurant. I worked as a cultural ambassador for the Soundbone Tra Traditional Arts Foundation, uh, mainly doing uh, in-person distance performances and virtual performances for uh, seniors' homes. And for the month of August, I did a percussion, a accompaniment for a... A modern dance class at the Dance Studio East in uh, St. John's, and at uh, uh, by the end of the summer, I had saved up enough money to purchase the basics that I needed, and that was my first kind of dive into using a uh, recording gear. And uh, um, as I started to kind of mess around with all the knobs and the buttons and the like, and trying to just figure out how it was going, um, I realized that one of the one of the main points of the cultural ambassador program at soundbone was community involvement since we would normally travel for the job uh which i did in 2019 uh i i traveled up and down the 
uh, Kitty Way Coast uh, played in seven or eight different towns in 2019. But of course, uh, this past summer, we couldn't uh, do that as uh, I had to stay home in uh, Puchkov. So there was a bigger emphasis on getting involved in your kind of home uh, town. And of course, um, I had worked with the uh, Puchkov Heritage Society on multiple occasions before. I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, Ken Pippen as well, who was a chair at Her who was a chair at Heritage Society. He's here in this meeting today. Uh, hi, uh, hi uh, Ken. So I reached I reached out to Ken. This was probably uh, the be the middle or the end of July, and uh, I I basically said to him that uh, you know like is there anything you guys are working on now, just something that we can collaborate on. And we just started chatting. Oh, we chatted. We started chatting over the phone. And we were just kind of brainstorming. And Ken was actually the one that came up with 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 the idea. So I had to give him credit where credit is due. Uh, it was his idea to focus in on a um, Newfoundland soundbook. And during that conversation, I remembered learning about uh, some of the popular folk sound collectors from the 20th century in a course that I did in the winter 2020 semester. And one of those collectors was Gerald S. Uh, Doyle. And it also just kind of happened that uh, during the first lockdown, I happened to find a copy of one of his sound books in my uh, house during during the lockdown. So I just kind of took all these as as like signs from the university, like this is what you you should you should do so i ultimately decided okay yeah you know this is what i'm going to do and i haven't really looked looked uh back since so the project started uh the end of july the beginning of august in the summer working with puchkov heritage society and uh, sound bone and during uh, uh july and august uh before the fall 20 before the fall 2020 semester started uh, i had recorded uh three songs from the soundbook that either had just vocals or vocals and guitar. And then uh, when the fall 2020 semester uh, started uh, and I I figured out that I could propose the Gerald S. Doyle soundbook project uh, as a music in the com community project, um, I realized that not only could I take the project to, to the next level in terms of the level of production on it, but I could also get uh, credit for it. So um, the first way that I expanded the project was by introducing more uh, instruments. So I introduced the uh, bazooki and the uh, balron into the instrumentation. And um, the the combos I used for the first four songs that I recorded in the fall 2020, 2020 semester for the mu for the music in the in the community credits were uh, vocals and guitar, vocals and bazooki, vocals only, and vocals and balron. And then uh, it came time to do the fifth song, which I which I chose to be uh, Lukey's Boat. And I went back to just um, guitar and vocals. But I didn't feel too good about it because it 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 really felt to me like I was using the same formula over and, and over again. Because that was the eighth song that I had that I had, that I had recorded and and four uh, four of them up to that point. So half were just guitar and um, vocals. But I, I knew that, you know, where I play multiple um, instruments that, you know, I could do more with this. So um, uh, by this point, this was around uh, the midterm break, uh, I knew how to record multiple instruments in the recording software that I was using, but I didn't know how to show multiple videos at the same time. Um, Fortunately, I was learning the basics of video editing in another music course at the time, but I had to um, research on my own time uh, how to show multiple videos uh, simultaneously. And um, my my first uh, my first kind of um, try at doing the multi the multi uh, uh, video thing was a song called "The Squid The Squid Squidging Ground," written by uh, Art uh, Scamble from the Change Islands. And uh, this video uh, blew up on Facebook uh, compared to the ones that came before it, which I think was mostly due to it being different from the eight videos that came before it. Uh, if you put all of the videos be, be if you put all the videos before the squidging ground side side by side, uh, they they all look very similar because it's just me performing as a kind of solo act. But with the 
uh, squid jigging ground and some of the videos that followed it, there was more of a um, one man band uh, kind of thing uh, happening, which I think uh, engaged the uh, viewers more. And uh, after the uh, squid jigging ground video, I continued to do multi track recordings for the rest of the semester using uh, different combinations of uh, instruments. And just to kind of tie everything to, together, uh, overall, uh, I think this project has really helped me uh, develop my skills as a as a musician in many many ways. Uh, I I began this project less than a year ago, never having recorded anything uh, before, and I and I am still working on it now with a very um, extensive knowledge of not only re recording processes but also. Um, uh, uh filming content and and how to take video and audio and make them work together in a big final uh, project um i feel that my musicianship has also broadened through arranging these songs with various instruments and making them my own uh i i started off by simply playing the songs with vocals and gu guitar but by the end of the fall 2020 semester i was adding introductions and 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 instrumental sections to the songs and just to give you a bit of an example of that, uh, I have the link here for the Squid Jigging Ground video. And I think after that, then, uh, if we have time, I think we'll do a live song and then it'll be a Q&A session. But uh, um, just be uh, before I show the video, I'd like to uh, thank you all again for uh, coming uh, this afternoon. And thank you uh, once again uh, to Dr. Shea and Dr. Hardy Cox and the rest of the um committee for uh, uh selecting me for this award i'm i'm uh, very very honored and very very uh humbled and for your viewing pleasure there's the squidging round
One poor little boy, he got it right in the eye. But they don't give a darn on this squid chicken crowd. Now if ever you feel inclined to go squidding, leave your white shirt and collar behind in the town. And if you get cranky, put out your silk hanky, you'd better stay clear of the squid chicken crowd. Yes, you'd better stay clear of the squid chicken I think if we all wanted to unmute ourselves and clap, I, I don't think that would be uh, inappropriate. <laughs> Jamie, that was absolutely incredible. Um, I just want to, before I pass it over to, to uh, Dr. Myrick to do some, uh, to facilitate the question and answers. I just want to say that I expect the next time I drive into Pooch Cove, Ken, to see a big poster up there to say the pride of Pooch Cove and to see Jamie's picture below it, because uh, this is truly a, an absolutely brilliant day for Pooch Cove and it's an absolutely brilliant day for Memorial University. Um, again, before I pass it over to, to Dr. Myrick, I just want to say that I can't think of a better time in the middle of a worldwide pandemic to bridge music, which touches the soul and provides hope and education, which touches the soul and provides hope. And I can't think of a better analogy to, to see this amazing young man perform here today and blend what we've all done uh, in education and blend that whole piece of hope in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. So, Jamie, I think you've been not just inspirational, but you've given us back more than we could ever give you in, in the awarding of this award. So, thanks. And without further ado, now I'm going to pass it back to Kim. Thank you, Dr. Shea. Thank you, Dr. Donnie Hardy Cox and, and Jamie. Amazing. That was fantastic. I really do wish my father was here to see that. Um, it was, it was something else. Uh, you know, I gotta say, I always feel inadequate after these, these, you know, presentations by students, <laughs> honestly, it's, uh, it's phenomenal what our undergraduate students can do. So I'm going to open up the floor now, or you can put in the chat, feel free. Um, or uh, to put a question in for um, or comment in for Jamie, and we'll certainly t uh, take uh, take that for Jamie now. And then Jamie, I think people are interested in sticking around and and seeing a live performance, so we'll try to make a little time for that too. So good stuff. And I'm just going to put in the chat uh, um, where you can go to check out Jamie's more of Jamie's work and and how to get in touch with him follow up with him. So we'll have some Q&A now. I think, I think there's a question there in the chat actually from, uh, from uh, Bill. From Bill. Okay. We'll Bill, take Bill Bill's chat. Yep. There you go. What? You can take it away there, Jamie, if you like. Yeah, sure. Uh, what is it about the bazooki Greek instrument that you find intriguing or interesting that you choose to use it in your arrangements? I know it isn't an uncommon instrument to find in Irish traditional and contemporary folk music. Thank you, Bill, for the question. And uh, thank you as well for being my uh, supervisor for this project and everything. Uh, I think for the bazooki, uh, it's a relatively new instrument to uh, Newfoundland folk music. Uh, it comes from Greece and it became part of Irish music in the late sixties and the early seventies with the likes of in bands like, uh, Sweeney's men and, uh, Planksty mainly. And, um, I think the first group, I think the first groups to use it, uh, in Newfoundland, I, I think the first group, I thought the first group for a long, long time was the Irish descendants, which would, which would be uh, in the early nineties. But I think, uh, Figgy Duff might use it on one of their albums, so that so that might put it back a little bit farther into the um, '80s. But uh, uh, I think the sound of it to me has always just just really kind of drew it. Really kind of just, just drew me in. It it's a very unique sounding instrument, and the way that it's 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 tuned, it's just a really interesting instrument. And um, I think the fact that it's still relatively new to Newfoundland music. 
as well as kind of a a another reason to use it because it's it's a it um i think it can be seen as a another color on the kind of color palette of uh sounds that we can use in our uh in our a arrangements of these uh, newfoundland folk songs excellent jamie and thank you bill for that question fantastic uh jennifer brown Hi, thank you. Fantastic, James. I absolutely love the video. Wasn't expecting the four quadrants and seeing you play the four instruments. Uh, so that was awesome and so creative. I, I my question, uh, and I wanted to hear what your experience has been with uh, the community, because a big part of this was, uh, I think, inspired as well from connecting with people when we're physically apart from each other. And so I was wondering what that meant for you and what type of feedback you received from those in the community uh, that were joining in to watch you live or to watch the videos. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I think that kind of, uh, I think one of my main goals with it when I, when I kind of first started off with the project and, 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 even going back to the beginning of the pandemic, when I, when I, when I just started doing the um, live uh, streams, uh, I think one of the main kind of goals that I had in mind was always to just bring people together. Uh, because back in March of 2020 and April and May, when the pandemic first started, we knew nowhere near as much as we do now. And there was a lot of uncertainty. It was very, very, um, it was very, very, you know, kind of anxious uh, times. And uh, I think that that kind of helped me realize that music has gotten me through some anxious times in my life as well. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was doing what I could for, you know, my my friends and family of and, and the people of um, um, Puchko because we were all in a, a, a lockdown at that time. And, you know, we couldn't really see each other. We didn't really know what was um, happening. And... Um, I felt like I, I, I felt like it was kind of my duty in a way to bring the uh, Puchkov Heritage Society into it because the people of Puchkov have done nothing but uh, support me. They've they've came out to gigs and uh, dances and they've been sharing the videos and everything on Facebook and commenting and liking and they're and they're they're sharing the videos with their family on on the mainland and really you know kind of help me they're they're helping me to get my music out there so i think that the the sense of community is really one of the things that's at the core of this whole project and i and i i think it's been something that's been at the core of of any kind of musical endeavor that, that I've that I've decided to go down uh, since the pandemic started. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Jennifer. That's fantastic. And and Jamie too. You know, I think you put a you just hit on a whole other level of getting to the heart of learning there, our theme, because you take your learning and how that reaches out to the community. It's that's out, outstanding. Wow. Yep. Yeah. As Dr. Shea, Jennifer Moran is the proud Moran in the, in the, in the crowd here, as Dr. Shea put it, the proud pride of Pooch Cove. Yep. I bet. Pro uh, uh, probably, uh, second generation pride of pooch Cove, only to patrick um moran who is of course a well-known uh, uh fiddle player and everything as well second only to <laughs> patty. are you related to patty um my mother's side is weird but i don't I... <laughs> now here we go we'll get yeah, into this, who, we're, the, the... Get, we're getting down to the heart of it now <laughs> that's it now who's related to who in newfoundland yes Exactly. So, how about if we have a live performance? Uh, unless anybody else has a, a real burning desire for a question of Jamie? Give us a whirl, Jamie. Give us a whirl, yes. Uh, I was thinking about what song to do, because, of course, we only have time for one, and there's thousands of songs. 
millions of mi 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 uh, mi millions of songs really and i i opted in the end not to do a song from the doyle book but to but to do one that i think kind of represents kind of um the support uh for my music that i've gotten from the university kind of full uh circle uh, it was about three or four days before the pandemic started last uh, March, and I had received word that uh, I had received the uh, Dermot O'Reilly uh, Legacy Award, which was uh, set up in memory of Dermot O'Reilly, who, of course, was a member of uh, Ryan's, uh, uh, who was a member of Ryan's Fancy, and Dermot passed away in, I think, 2005 or 2006. And uh, Dermot and Ryan's Fancy were one of my biggest musical uh influences grow uh, growing up and they 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 still are now uh i've had the great pleasure to meet and work with uh fergus o'barn who was with another member of ryan's fancy on multiple um uh sessions and they were well known for helping with the revival of newfoundland folk music but also uh dermot wrote some songs himself that also went down to become very um um popular and they and they've kind of set themselves up with a kind of permanent spot in the canon of the newfoundland folk song um rep uh, repertoire so i thought i would do one of uh dermot's songs uh one of my all-time favorite songs um across any uh, uh genre and any any style of music uh, it's just something about how it sounds and the way that that the, that the chords go around and just how everything comes together. I, I think it's just a, a great song, and I'm sure some of you folks pro probably probably know it. Uh, so it's a song written by Dermot O'Reilly called "Candlelight and Wine." Well, I meant to call you just before I left to go away But I guess you know that's what I'd say by now Then again, I'm never sure when it's the proper time of day Since we never get together anyhow But it was really nice to watch the candles through a glass of wine Dreaming dreams together when the quiet nights were yours and mine just a pair of fools are wrapped up in soft lights dancing from the fire Till the morning lights go to whisper in the sky I keep thinking that you saw me in the park the other day When I have the time I go to where we met When I'm on the road I see you in the crowd or by the way It's gonna take some time before I can forget it was really nice to watch the candles through a glass of wine Dreaming dreams together when the quiet nights were yours and mine Just a pair of fools are wrapped up in soft lights dancing from the fire Till the morning lights go to whisper in the sky There's a party for some friends we both know when I'm back in town Do you think that you could get there for a while? Though we were never meant to happen, so it doesn't mean to say We can't share a glass and look back with a smile But it was really nice to watch the candles through a glass of wine Dreaming dreams together when the quiet nights were yours and mine are wrapped up in soft lights dancing from the fire till the morning lights go to whisper in the sky just a pair of fools are wrapped up in soft lights dancing from the fire till the morning lights go to whisper in the sky till the morning lights go to whisper in the sky Woohoo! 
Thank you. Fantastic, Jamie. That was a real treat at the end of our uh, first day of our conference. Let me tell you, thank you so much for that. No problem. Thank you awesome. very much. Yes, what a, what a delight. Yeah, it's a privilege to have you here today and part of the conference and, and for you to share that with us. So I can tell you how proud I am and I'm sure everybody here is to see the quality of the learning from our you know, undergraduate students and you're sure a testament to that for sure. So thanks again and thanks Rob, thanks Donna for for once again leading this initiative with the student undergraduate award. It's uh, it's here to stay, I think, you know, it's 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 unique to Memorial and hopefully uh, or it certainly was that way the way it has started. So hopefully that's staying around for some time.